Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and today I want to talk about one of my favorite periods in history, and that is the Islamic Golden Age. Now, as Europe was struggling through the Middle Ages, with lost knowledge from the Western Roman Empire and poor scientific communications, the opposite was occurring in the Middle East. The Eastern Roman Empire continued for a thousand years after the Western Empire fell, and they continued the Roman approach to science. In other words, the Byzantines were very good engineers and had fantastic architecture. But like the Romans, they were more into the practical aspect. They weren't the thoughtful observers that the ancient Greeks were that did science simply for the sake of science. But there was another culture in the Eastern world that took the opposite approach, and that was the Golden Age of Islam. The Golden Age of Islam was responsible for devices like this. This is an astrolabe or an astrolab and it is used for astronomical observations, for survey, and for a variety of other options, even timekeeping. So let's take a moment and talk about Islam in the Middle Ages. Now every society has its share of what they call polymaths, people that are extremely skilled in a variety of academic disciplines. But in order for a society to succeed scientifically, it has to have certain characteristics. It has to be wealthy enough to be able to afford to employ people basically to think. It has to have an educational system. It has to have a common language. Now these factors were lacking in Western Europe during the Middle Ages, especially the early Middle Ages after the fall of the Roman Empire in the West. However, in Islam, a premium was placed on scholarship for cultural and religious reasons. The idea was sort of, if you want to rule the world, you need to know the world. And early on in the religion of Islam, uh, two goals were set up. First of all, they wanted a common language, and that was to spread the word of the Quran. But more importantly, they wanted the entire empire to have a sense of unity, and as a result, they settled on Arabic. The second thing that they did was they set about collecting the knowledge of the ancient world. Uh, they would get Greek texts and Roman texts and Indian and Chinese material and translate them into Arabic and collect them in great libraries. And to do this, they sent on emissaries to get them. The other thing is they also talked to travelers that came to their lands. So for example, if you brought a, a scientific book that they did not have, they would pay you the weight of that book in gold. And as a result, they collected a great deal of material. Scholars would translate this material into Arabic, and then they would turn these books over to the intellectuals uh, to understand and expand upon them. Now, when you govern a large region, one of the things that you may want to know is, well, how much of the earth do you control? Uh, this would be a very important problem because it would tell you how much more you still had to conquer. So this was a question that was of interest to the rulers of Islam. Now, there were a number of problems with this. They were aware of how Eratosthenes determined the circumference of the earth. However, unlike Eratosthenes, uh, travel in their part of the world involved very long treks through the desert with little or no water. Plus, even if they did go through the effort to do that, how would their measurement be any better than that of Eratosthenes? Al-Biruni was an Islamic polymath around 1000 AD or so, and on his desk were Arabic translations of books of geometry and trigonometry and algebra. And he set his mind to the problem of trying to find a simple mathematical way to determine the size of the earth. While visiting the fortress of Nandana in Pakistan, the answer came to him. Nandana was a hilltop fortress uh, about 450 meters above a valley. This is actually a view from the fortress. And Al-Biruni worked out a mathematical formula to very precisely determine the height of the hill. And then measuring the dip to the horizon, he was able to work out the radius of the Earth. And to do this, all he needed was an astrolabe. Now, the mathematics of finding the mountain height and looking for the radius of the Earth by measuring the dip to the horizon are very elegant, and I've got a couple of videos on them. Or you can just simply go to Walter Bisland's Advanced Earth Curve Calculator. It's all right here, including corrections for refraction. And refraction, of course, would be relatively minimal. Even without including refraction or the curvature of the Earth, you get a very accurate determination of the radius of the Earth. Failure to include the curvature of the surface of the Earth in the calculation uh, does result in an error, but that error is about 2 meters out of 450 plus. 
and the end result is not significantly different from the true radius of the Earth. Now, as the Middle Ages wore on, there was more and more contact between Western Europe, the Eastern Roman Empire, and Islam. This is the time of the Crusades to recapture Jerusalem. You had the Muslim invasions of Europe. You had the fall of the Byzantine Empire in 1453. So even though they were in warfare, there was mingling of the cultures. When Constantinople fell, Byzantine scientists emigrated to Europe to escape the Muslims and brought with them their science and knowledge of Greek. By 1200 AD, the works of Aristotle and some of the earlier Greek masters had been retranslated into Latin, both through the efforts of scholars in Europe, especially in Ireland, and through the introduction of Arabic to Latin translations of the ancient works. Now, the next period of history that I want to talk about is going to be the Renaissance and Enlightenment. But one of the first issues that we have to address is the Protestant Reformation. This is a time of conflict between Protestant and Catholic. This is the time of the Thirty Year War and the Peace of Westphalia. So, this is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for stopping by. Make sure you drop me a like and a subscribe. I'm nearing the end of Section 2, uh, and then I'm going to start getting into the modern Flat Earth. So I should have this done sometime this weekend. And I'm going to start my study of the modern flat earth the first of the week. So until then, take care, folks.